Um, hi, everyone. I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, my name is Jeff Mull. I'm CEO and co-founder of, uh, of Human People. And I suppose I kind of come at things from a, a little bit more of the clinical side. I'm at the call face. You know, the people who are using these tests, using this technology to try to actually, you know, make it work and decide who gets what. You know, some amazing therapeutics out there, but, you know, what, what do I need? Um, and actually, we've been on Greek mythology, so I thought I'd give my little bit as well. Um, I don't know if you know the story of Tithonus and Eos. So Tithonus was this beautiful mortal who fell in love with Eos, the goddess of the dawn. And um, Zeus, being rather jealous of anyone who was handsome, um, he decided that he would grant them one wish, but one wish only. And typical devil's bargain, um, he gave Tithonus um, eternal life, which sounds great, until um, he didn't age very well. So as he got older and older, um, Eos got increasingly irritated by his demented ramblings and finally turned him into a grasshopper. Um, and that's why in Greek mythology, or Greeks, you know, they said the grasshoppers are um, immortal um, and their chirping, their constant chirping is similar to that of, of demented old men. So with human people, we're kind of, we've been over this, you know, we have our own tyth uh, Tythonus problem. And you know, these are government statistics um, from the Office of National Statistics and in the UK, um, the average life expectancy is 80.5. Healthy life expectancy is only 62. Um, so, at the moment, you know, I'm 46. That means 48% of my life is in good health. 52% is in ill health. And the healthy life expectancy is not increasing. Um, life expectancy is so that, actually that percentage figure is slowly creeping up. And we know. And certainly from my clinical experience, that you know, all these little problems, that when they're chronic, um, you know, that the chronic muscle aches, you know, the low energy, um, the poor sleep. I'm talking about something that's going on over a period of time. You know, these are the indicators that we should not ignore. Because this is what turns into non-communicable disease. And you know, I've seen this in my clinic, I've seen doctors, my own colleagues come in um, with you know, significant health issues. And, you know, the number of times they think, God, I'd seen you five years earlier, you know, it was all pretty clear when you go through that clear history that, you know, the issue is already there. You know, dementia is now number one cause of death in the UK, followed closely by cardiovascular disease. But we know these are all diseases of function, you know, not of infection. We're great at curing disease of, uh, of infection. Um, and these are the great challenge that, that we currently have, as you've heard from previous speakers. And, and we know that. We're all trying to cure ourselves. Um, we're out there, you know, 61% of people are actively seeking a cure. Um, it's 32 million people in the UK. Um, but who's helping them? You know, the simplest, you know, this is a broken market. The simplest question is actually, which of these therapeutics is actually going to help me? I read an article here, I had a you know, lecture here, and that's all become really disjointed. That's why. You know, we do a lot of blood testing. Um, only 4% of people who come into our clinics, but even who are on different therapeutics or supplements or, uh, ther or nutraceuticals, um, only 4% of them actually have, have normal levels of these basic nutrients. And you know, as we've said, you know, a lot of this can be prevented and certainly compressed um, over time. And, you know, let me tell you a little bit about, about my own story. So, you know, I left the NHS in 2007. We set up a chain of skin and anti-aging clinics. You know, we've seen thousands of patients over the years. And you know, we do specialize a lot in chronic skin disease. And for a long time, like a lot of clinicians, you know, we look at symptom X, we give them treatment Y, and that's great. And then they come back a year and a half later. And after a while, you start thinking, well, actually, you know, should we not be trying to understand the root cause of this disease? rather than just handing a therapeutic. And that's when you know, I started looking a little bit deeper into you know, what's, you know, what's the blood markers doing here? And so we started seeing some patterns of you know, certain nutrients missing. And, and then about five or six years ago, when genomics became more available, we thought this would be the answer. But genomics is really difficult to integrate into health. And so we start developing our own algorithms as to you know, matching up these pro-inflammatory genes looking at these for bioenergetics and mitochondrial detoxification to actually make them useful within our clinic. And then, of course, the whole microbiome issue came along. You know, you can do all of this and someone's got a terrible gut and you miss out 
one of the biggest issues. And a lot of doctors would say 60 to 65% of chronic inflammation started in your gut. So you've got to bring that into the picture as well. And how do we make this easier for our clinicians? So we started building all these algorithms to start putting all of this together. And it's all about profiling, genomic risk profiling, gut profiling, and overall that, you know, where, if this problem person comes in with a problem, where does it sit? And certainly top of that list when it came to skin um, is inflammation. And, you know, something like this is really subtle, um, but it's really useful um, to use because, you know, a little bit of eczema in the finger, no big deal. However, if you're, if you're looking at biomarkers, it's great to measure them. But actually, if you have a clinical sign that once you actually intervene and that disappears, we know that as those, you know, HSRP markers, et cetera, all disappear, but actually that person is not only, you know, they can tell you they feel better, but if they hold up their hand and something like eczema is gone, you know you've actually made a difference. So how do we do it? So all that difficult, you know, medicine hasn't changed. History is still king. And it's that detailed story we want at the start. But by using AI, we can get a really detailed questionnaire. And we have complex algorithms that sit behind it, branched questions. And you start building up this picture with a real consistency. All this high-tech testing, you know, everyone's going, DNA testing is great, microbiome testing is great, you know, these biomarkers are great, they're all great, they just need to be brought together to actually be, make sense of it for, for people and clinicians to use. All needs to be based on good clinical data, and then it's how do you bring all of this integration together, and that's, as human people, what we've been doing. And so we're very much data-driven, um, and that allows us to be scalable as well, because you know, the length of time it takes our clinicians and the clinic doing this takes a long time. However, if you do all the hard work and the number crunching for them, all of a sudden this becomes scalable and it becomes affordable, not just for the wealthy few, but for a lot more than that. Um, we're also a health and diagnostics regulated CQC business. And where do we sit? Well, it's kind of bang in the middle of all these areas, you know, digital health, preventative health, uh, personalized medicine and you know, to agree we use a lot of you know, non-prescription um, therapeutics. And at the moment, you know, we actually have launched a product just recently. It's a five-step process that, that we use. And right at the core of that is, that is that algorithm, that history. Find out. People are great at telling you what's, what's wrong with them. And that's what leads where we then dive in, like any clinician would do, is into testing. And actually bring out, when we did our, when we did our pilot study, uh, we started off using at-home finger prick tests. And the abuse that some of our um, helpers or a team got um, with these, you know, they weren't fit for purpose. So that kind of held us up a bit. So uh, I don't know if anyone recognized this device. It's um, spin out from MIT in the States. And that we brought over, just got C marked. And well, you literally put a device in your arm, you click a button, and it collects a blood sample, which can then be sent off to a specialist lab. So, you know, that took a long time. We've just finished validating that um, a few months ago. And it's not exclusive, but it's a fantastic device. When it comes to DNA, we have tied up with Atlas Biomed, but we can, our software reads any Illumina platform data, and also looking at 16S gene sequencing in the stool. And we know there's much more detailed testing can be done in all this area, but we're trying to be, what is realistic commercially? What will people be able to afford? And, you know, all of this is obviously important to put on a dashboard. You know, people love seeing the results. You know, that challenge of getting in from the, from the green zone, or from the red zone into the green zone, you know, what, you know, what am I using? What's, uh, what's going to work for me? Um, and then also a lot of the reports. And people want a range of reports. They want just, just tell me what's going to work to give me the real granular detail. So that dashboarding process and how that will affect behavior change. Because ultimately, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make people live healthier. But that comes in two ways. And I, I did some interesting workshops with Kim Wilde from Google. And she was going, look, you've got to do two things. One, make it really easy. And two, motivate people. Testing is really good for motivating people. When they see their numbers is not right, you know, they have a choice to ignore that. But actually, there's a reason to do something with it. 
And then you try to make it as easily as possible. If you go in there going, you need to change your life, you need to change all the food you eat, you need to get that virtuous circle going. And that's what we've tried to do. We've concentrated on therapeutics and nutraceuticals at the moment. So we have our own in-house packaging robots, similar to technology that PillPack use. Um, so once the algorithm has spat out what the best recommendation for that person is based on their tests, it's then reviewed by a clinician and sent to this robot, which will send out a pack. These come out every four weeks. So again, it's all about trying to make life easy. But it doesn't stop there. You've got to then retest. You've got to prove your concept. And that's what we've spent a long time doing, making sure that what our approach um, actually works. And that is fantastic for people starting on their health journey. Once they see that a simple Im implementation has actually worked, they start thinking about other things in their life. They start realizing that, well, that's lipids, this lipidemia. Maybe I will start changing what I eat. They start getting engaged with it. They need to take control of what their health issues are. We've brought the product to the market um, and we've started seeing really good results already. Um, we've had some pretty, pretty nice evangelical uh, people kind of posting um, about how much better they feel. Um, and, and we do have a sophistication in how we do this. It's not about take this drug at this dose. Um, there's an example where we can actually send drugs out and taper them at different stages, correction, maintenance. And you know, give you a typical example. You know, this chap, you know, James, 44 years old, did our AI questionnaire. And you know, he, he popped up you know, issues of brain fog, low energy, immune issues, inflammation. And so that helps us define the problem, but not the answer. And we then went to have a look at you know, some of the really simple markers. You know, before we get high tech, Let's look at those basic fundamentals. You know, what is his basic you know, omega-3s doing? What's his you know, lipids doing? What's his vitamin D doing? You know, these don't have to be expensive locations. And then let's profile what his genetics look like. He had some issues with detoxification. He had a slightly more inflammatory profile. He had a really poor gut diversity because he'd been having constant antibiotics for his chest infections. And this whole circle makes things worse. Some pretty simple interventions um, and reduce that inflammation, support his mitochondrial bioenergetics pathways. You know, some dietary changes were in there as well. And these were his bloods. And this was about 13 weeks later. You know, we pretty much fixed his cholesterol. Um, his other markers were corrected. But it's all the symptoms are cleared up. And that's, that's a pretty typical story. Our testing, or our data overall, have shown that 96% of the people we've tested have at least one um, abnormal nutrient. 52% of, of people have issues with mitochondrial uh, bioenergetics, and 38% of people have really significant gut issues. So you can see how you just can't leave any one of those out. If you do, you know, you're just not going to be able to help people properly. Obviously, we're looking at general health at the moment, and we do intend to move in to more disease-centric um, issues. As I mentioned before, there's an enormous number of people that are already out there trying to get help. Um, how does our model actually work? At the moment, we're based on revenues from testing, from, from actually subscription packages. Um, at the moment, as we build up our health hub, uh, we don't charge anything for that at the moment. Um, but as you can see, you know, we don't need an enormous number of subscribers to turn this into a valuable business of a 1 million um, annual recurring revenue. And it's hard to kind of find any competitors because no one else is doing what we're doing. No one is integrating all of these tests together outside a clinic. Um, there's a few supplement companies that do a questionnaire. You know, that's a stratified approach. It's not that much different from asking a healthcare or a health store assistant. Um, and we're certainly less expensive. So most of our interventions cost less than a cappuccino a day. How are we going to get there? As I mentioned, we do have some anti-aging clinics, and that's our first um, step. But it's also the corporate well-being market, um, or the other market that we're in talks with at the moment. So who's behind the team? So this is the, the headline team um, across a few different sectors. Um, we've got Christine, who's one of the leading um, nutritionists here in the UK. Um, my co-founder, Henry, who's um, an ex-management consultant from Bain. Karen Kidd, who's you know, driving the brand, who's head of brand at Caffeinario. 
And Alex Sparrow, who's, he's been the brains, the data scientist, he's got a PhD from, from CERN, so he's been helping us crunch all these numbers. Um, and I'm sure as you know, you recognize probably a lot of these companies. You know, it's an area where there is a lot of investment, there is a, a lot of interest. And we've done a lot on a pretty tight budget so far. Um, we've got our CQC regulation, which during COVID was certainly a struggle. Um, we've validated our new blood device. You know, we've, we've proven our concept um, and we've actually got our product on the market and we've started to, to sell it already. And yes, we are out there with our Capanan looking to raise in further investment for our next stage at the moment. So unsurprisingly, you know, we're looking to build out our tech and our product, um, building out our operations and some key hires um, as well. So my tech home message from all of this is that there's high tech and there's, in a way, there's integration of all this low tech. Uh, people often come to me and say, you know, when they say they've had a DNA test done, they say, what did you do with it? And they're just like, well, it was interesting. I didn't really know. Uh, that's what we're here for. We want to actually integrate all of this together right at the core phase to go, right, this is actually the actionable steps that you can do. This is the three therapeutics that's going to help you best. Um, and that has to be done, you know, one human at a time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.